Well, there's nothing there's nothing in these speakers that uh, Matt that neither you or Mikey haven't already experienced on a first hand basis for a long time. You know, they're just simply taking the best of what's in the XVX and the Alex V and sort of skinning skimming it down and putting it into the Alexia series speaker. And and by that I mean what this does have is the quad uh, mid-range driver, which uses the same magnet structure that we have uniquely in the XEX loudspeaker, as well as the Alex V. The difference being here in the, uh, is that we have one of them as opposed to two in the XEX and uh, et cetera. It does have, however, the carbon tweeter, which is in your speaker, the Alex V, which is phenomenal. That's a, it's, it's a great, great tweeter. Um, also, the speaker has the benefit of all of the new capacitors that Wilson Audio is now doing in-house. Um, there's a very famous cap company called RailCap, which the owner and the founder of which uh, called uh, Daryl about, I don't know, a few years ago. He's in his uh, mid-80s, and he said, I'm retiring, and um, uh, you better start looking for another source for your capacitors because I won't be doing this forever. And Daryl made a rather interesting and strategic decision to take a team out there and, and examine the company, and uh, we bought it. And we brought the skilled craftsmen, several of them, back to Wilson, and we set up a, our facility so that we're now manufacturing all of our capacitors, not only replicating what they were doing, but we now have the resources to develop the capacitors specifically down to our tolerance and also build them out of our own materials, which we're doing a lot of research in there there are versions of the capacitors that we're making that are unique in this loudspeaker, in the Alex V and in the XVS. So, and there will be more that will populate all of the Wilson products as, as time goes on. So this is a big deal for us. Anyway, getting back to the Alex V. The original Alex V uh, in standard paint, Alexia too rather, in standard paint sold for around, uh, Chris, how much is 57 Nine somewhere in that neighborhood, fifty-seven thousand. This will retail for sixty-seven thousand five hundred dollars a pair, um, and that uh, that original price was established over five years ago, and so it's not that big of an increase. But what is really remarkable is it's a substantially better speaker, and included with the speaker are our newly developed what we call the acoustic diodes which retail as a set for $3,200. So if you were to offset that price increase, that comes now standard with this. So the price increase is, is, is significant, but not overbearing, you know, and uh, the base enclosure is around 8% bigger than the predecessor. Uh, the mid-range enclosure now has the benefit of a whole different routing for the back wave of the mid-range driver and uh, baffling techniques that are going on in there that we hadn't developed uh, at the time we developed the Alexia 2. And the tweeters I mentioned does have the carbon, plus the calibration on the top is a little bit more precise, a little bit uh, so that you get even greater control of the position of the drivers relative to each other in the time domain. I don't know quantitatively what that means, but what I do know is that in my experience in listening to it, and I own the Alexia 2s, for about five years, and so I, I live with them. And uh, in every way, this speaker is revolutionary compared to the Alexia 2. It's certainly by no means an Alex V, and it's certainly by no means an XVX, which I'm proud to say I own now. <laughs> but it is a uh, it's a vast improvement, and I think it's fair to say that I think it'll it'll punch way above its weight. And I think the only speaker that it'll hold a second place at this point would be our own uh, Alexia or Alex V speaker because it it's in standard color at 67,500. I think it'll outperform most speakers in the 80 or $90,000 range that are out there. The modulus of impedance is uh, slightly higher, meaning that it doesn't go quite as low as the Alexia 2 did, but it does go low. And therefore a good amp with good current capability uh, would be a, pre a pre -re -re prerequisite. Um, the efficiency is approximately one dB more efficient than the speaker it replaces. 
I could put that in, but that, that represents 33% increase in power. <laughs> Not really, but uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, the materials are essentially the same except the V material. And that's why we don't call it an Alexia 5. We call it the Alexia V because it makes significant use of a new proprietary material that was developed originally for the uh, XVX and that now uh, populates for example, the whole top plate under the head assembly here is essentially V material. Of course, there's V material in the spikes, and there's strategically located V material throughout the, the bracing in the back and so forth. So it does have much faster damping characteristics than the speaker that it represents, which means it goes to black quicker. It increases the sense of dynamics, very much like its bigger brothers do now. So it, it has... Uh, a tremendous sense of dynamics and clarity. Um, uh, those are the basic things. Oh, there's a little opening in the back here. And we discovered this uh, as part of the skeletal architecture that Daryl is orienting towards now. That allows for a significant amount of venting of the of energy that's stored where it did there was a bit of a cavity here. We also removed the lip here, which allows again for a little bit more venting. Um, and it does, uh, it does increase the sense of transparency. They're being shown here with the grills off, obviously. The, the grills can be obtained in any color you wish. The speakers can be painted in any color that you wish. We have about six standard colors, and then we have about an unlimited number of upgrade colors, all the way up to something called pearl finish which is a whole very elaborate painting process that uh, substantially increases the price of the speaker. But when you see it, it's worth having. Um, I think uh, uh, it's, 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 a good, it's a good thing. While I'm blabbering, any questions? The width of the speaker compared to the previous model? It it's about an, a, about an inch deeper. But the width is about the same? About the same. And also on the uh, front baffle, it's a good question, Matt. On the front baffle, the front baffle actually is angled ever so slightly back, where on the Alexia 2, it's perfectly vertical. And included in the back here, when you take a look, you'll see there is a spirit level, which greatly aids in making sure that the speaker is perfectly vertical. And the, the acoustic diodes facilitate absolute precision in the verticality of the speaker. Verticality is rather critical in the design of our speakers because of the time alignment. It, it, you go to all this trouble getting the speakers in the, in the time domain, but if the speaker is slightly tilted forward or backwards or side to side, that throws some of that accuracy off. So being able to, abs irrespective of what the floor is, you want the speakers to be absolutely perpendicular. And that's the job of the person that does the, the install. I might add um, that uh, these speakers were set up by Chris and the staff here at Innovative. And um, um, I've now set up three pairs in, in different uh, situations so far at this point. And gosh, I'd have to say that uh, we had to move them. It's almost what, about a quarter of an inch, Chris, from where you set them? About a quarter of an inch? Yeah. That's about as far as we went. So. Uh, to get the alignment the way we wanted it. So he did an absolutely terrific job. And uh, the chain that we're going to be using here are the new uh, D'Agostino uh, Momentum amplifiers, the MVX, I think that they're... I'm sorry? MXV. MXV. And uh, we're using the D'Agostino uh, preamplifier. For source, for the time being, despite Mikey's presence, we're going to stick with digital, but we will play records later. If, uh, I have to leave the room when we do that, though. Um, I like it all. <laughs> okay. Um, we're using both the DCS digital front end and the uh, MSB, and so I can alternate between them at will. Um, and uh, we're, I'll be playing some of my files, but also, a lot of files being streamed off of either Tidal or uh, Cobuzz using, um, well, for the, for the sake of convenience, because I travel, I'm actually using Audirvana, which is embedded in my laptop. 
I did the same thing at your place, didn't I? And when I went to your place too, Mike, yeah, I carry my own show in, in, in the lap. It's not a question of what's better. It's a question of what works for me when, when I'm traveling. You know, I can carry a whole library of things, and et cetera. So, um, all right. The obvious thing is that chair is empty. Somebody should occupy it, and I'll just start playing music. Anymore.